Whoop. All right, welcome to <laughs> episode nine of the Dodgeball Marketing Podcast. My name is Chris. I'm Michael. And today, how you doing? Good. Yeah, happy Friday. I was about to go into it, but no, I was just going yeah, to happy doing. Friday. We're feeling, I'm feeling good. We got corporate yeah. bought donuts. Yeah, yeah, it was so, good. It was good. <laughs> so nice to show up and have donuts provided. Yeah, it was awesome. So we got donuts and coffee. A um, little caveat. Um, we went through a tornado yeah. a few months ago, and right now at the top of the building, there are like 10 guys with with uh, drills, drills and, and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So you might hear some noise, and if so, that's that's what it is. Um, so we won't address it or anything. We'll just yep. let you know now. Yep. Okay, cool. Michael, I'm just going to hold this the whole time. Yeah, what topic? What are we talking about today? Uh, we're going to talk about website uh, conversion rate for lead generation. So. Um, unless you're in e-commerce, um, most business websites are generated are built to generate leads. So you're going to ask people to do something, ask for their email address in exchange for uh, something else. So what we're going to talk about today is conversion rate, and that means um, ensuring that the maximum number of people that hit a given website or page actually do the thing that you want them to do. So right. this might be download a white paper, this might be schedule an appointment, this might be take a quiz, it could be any number of things. So the conversion and conversion rate is converting traffic into leads. Exactly, yeah. and so this is important, especially if you're paying for traffic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you, can, if you increase your conversion rate from 3% to 6%, well now you're getting double the leads yeah. for the exact same amount of money. Yeah, yeah huge improvement. Yeah, yeah. so small number, Huge improvement. Exactly. Yeah. So small tweaks you can make. And luckily, there are just general principles that exist across all websites, no matter what industry you're in, and no matter what kind of business you run, that will serve to increase your conversion rate. And we're going to talk right. about those. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Um, first things first, Mike, I'll let you kick this one off. Um, phone number and the header and the footer. Yeah. I there, There's kind of an old school way of thinking about phone numbers uh, that's like, oh, we don't want to push the phone number out there. It's a lot of work. Uh, but if you're trying to generate leads, you've got to kind of make sure that that hasn't kept you from using your phone number where you want to. If you're trying to get the phone to ring, if you're trying to gain new business, you really want that phone number everywhere. Uh, and so you want to be thoughtful about how you put it on a website so it's not confusing or creating any redundancy. However, we think it's reasonable to have a little mini CTA with phone number in the header uh, and to repeat that again in the footer or even in a full width block above the footer. And then uh, also going back up on the page in the hero area, sort of what shows above the fold, either on desktop or mobile, uh, uh, to have it kind of feature there in combination with some other content. And then for mobile users, we really like a sticky header that stays pegged at the top of the, the window frame um, with a clickable phone number. Uh, because if somebody's on uh, their phone, they're really less likely to want to complete a form and more likely to want to just do that one click and get something moving. Yeah, that's, so, a, yeah. that's a good point. I mean, of all yeah. the conversion actions, like it takes a little bit of time to fill out a form. It takes time to do other things on the site. But some people, especially yeah. if you're in like home services or something, like yep. if you're like, think about um, mold remediation services or, or water damage. Or, like, yeah, they, they got a problem to solve. Roofers, they painters, smash, plumbers. They want to smash everybody. a button and get somebody on the phone to help them. So Landscapers, yeah. And that sticky header, you know, you'll have to work with your website developer or whatever to do this if you don't have it already. But we're really talking about just keeping that phone number right there where it's always there one click away from becoming a lead. Yeah. Awesome. Phone number to header. Uh, number two. Yeah. Why don't you talk about this one? Yeah. Yeah. So this is answer your phone and make your phone experience easy. So you might say this doesn't have anything to do with conversion, right? This is like sales after the, after the, uh, after the phone call happens. But um, if you're doing phone tracking on your website, um, and somebody comes through, that's, that's a piece of script that swaps the phone number so you can track it and record phone calls and that sort of thing. Um, if you don't answer the phone, it doesn't actually come through as a conversion. Right. Um, it's, it ha the, the way the phone so softwares work is you have to actually answer the phone. So there's a few things you can do to act, and that are really simple to make sure that happens. Uh, one is make sure it routes to someone who is ready for it and equipped yeah. to deal with inbound sales calls. And a lot of times this means um, setting up, uh, routing it to maybe a personal cell phone of somebody who's more in charge of sales and business development. Um, you know, it, it can it can be problematic to push that phone call to somebody like a front desk person that has a lot of other duties and maybe mm -hmm. don't have the sales skills to really take a cold lead mm -hmm. and really warm them up and get them to take the next step. Yeah, that phone ringing is the gold. That's the that's the little piece of gold yeah. that you spent months and years dreaming about. 
Yeah. And so and you don't want to lose that when you when you have it in your hands. And it's different, especially with something like PPC leads. A lot of those are just on the colder side, mm -hmm. right? So they're maybe they're shopping around, maybe they're just dipping their toe in the water. So mm -hmm. you really need to be able to grab that cold lead, develop some rapport, engage in salesmanship, and warm them up so they can yeah. take the next step. And so that means having the right person in place, and that yeah. means things like I mean we had we've had clients before that maybe push people to a phone tree or did some other things that where they would push right. the bulk of their uh, calls that are coming from other sources. But um, th that's a really great way to cool down a lead yeah. um, if they're having to wait and go through and go through some steps in a phone tree. Um, so yeah, just simple things like making sure it goes to, goes to the right person and make sure that person's ready to answer the phone call and they've got their phone set up to where they know that that phone number is oh, from yeah. the website Yeah, lead. that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, you can, they can change the contact number to say like Google lead or website yeah. lead, uh, Sales and, lead. and yeah. make sure that they answer the phone. So that's just something that's actually yeah. really simple to implement but it's so important because you don't get that conversion right. unless you uh, answer the phone. Yeah, and it's a real reality check. I, I like this topic because uh, there's so many horror stories. We, uh, we've done a lot of call recording and monitoring and tracking over the years. And uh, if you use something like CallRail or what are, what's another one? Phone Wagon, Phone Ring Wagon. Central, there's a few. Yeah. You, you can record these calls and see what the customer experience is. And if you ever catch any of these calls where they get into a phone tree, you can even hear someone going to another number and verbalizing a countdown, five, four, three, two, one, and then hanging up. That means them giving up on your company. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's just absolutely brutal. And uh, we've recorded these and played them. Uh, at speaking events uh, as examples of how not to do it and it's just yeah. so cringy and so such a good lesson but if you if you need to you can secret shopper your company and see what your experience is or you can go ahead and implement one of these call recording uh, platforms and hear what customers are doing and often they will verbalize how they're feeling uh, on these calls because they're just so eager and ready to talk to somebody yeah, great. Uh, number three, Michael, why don't you talk about this one, uh, using a form above the fold and on all pages. Yeah, so something that's uh, easy for us to fall into, a lot of us think of the form as being on the contact page and we're generally uh, taking whatever someone's doing on a website and we're thinking about pushing them to a contact page where they can complete a form, uh, that's not really adding a step for them. That's adding a click. And in the world of e-commerce, uh, you know, with companies like Amazon and uh, other e-commerce companies that have gotten really good at doing uh, online marketing and having a high conversion rate, what we found is that anytime you can reduce the number of steps the customer has to take, you're going to increase the conversion rate. It's it's really it's really like a law of physics. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. The, less, the, 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 the more steps, people have to look, the less likely they are to yeah, take the action. Yeah, it's it's a it's just a rule. So we've been doing something lately, and this is pretty common. This is a pretty common tactic for uh, advertising landing pages. But we've been building websites where the homepage and the services pages are essentially landing pages. So a big value proposition uh, in the hero area, the above the fold main content, and a form right there and we're even testing out doing that with all services pages so if somebody's looking for uh, hardware uh, or hardwood uh, floor repair Nashville and they end up on a landing page for a service rather than getting kicked into a home page first and you they're can, right there with a value proposition for exactly that service exactly then, that market and a form right there in their in their view yeah I was gonna say the the other thing about that is you can contextualize that call to action to that page so yes rather than go to a contact page contact us they can say get a hardwood flooring quote get your Nashville hardwood flooring quote now right so so that's yeah. a much powerful Powerful, name phone specific you know. call to action yeah, than that's right contact us yep that's like right that. that's good uh, Chris why don't you tell talk about the next one uh, what's threat level threat level midnight how do you lower the threat level of your CTA yeah lower the threat level of your CTA so what this means is there's various um, calls to action that you could implement so one would be talk to a sales rep that's a mm -hmm. high threat level Mm -hmm. um, even get a free quote can be a get pretty a free high quote can be because like, well we're not ready because to they think yet. they're gonna talk to a salesperson yeah um, and then there are others that are maybe mid to low level. The lowest level is enter your email address to get this free download right. or something. Uh, and then maybe mid level, some kind of quiz or some kind of assessment, some kind of uh, other uh, thing where you're actually asking them for information, but you're not being forward with sales. Mm -hmm. So um, anytime you can, um, 
introduce a lower call, threat, lower threat call to action. So I'll give you an example. So um, if you are a weight loss center, um, your primary call to action might be something like schedule an appointment. So you're you're a medical practice, you want people to come in and schedule an appointment to see if they're a good fit for your weight loss, medical weight loss services. Mm -hmm. But a secondary one might be something like check insurance eligibility. So this will get people that are interested enough to like say, all right, now I'm ready to know how much this stuff mm. costs. Or that's kind of a, insurance is yeah. kind of a, sec, a, a secondary yeah. way of saying how much does this cost. Right. Um, so if you put that in there, you're going to get a lot more people to sign up. Now, they're not going to be as high quality leads and you have to nurture them after the fact, but it's going to increase your conversion rate significantly because mm -hmm. you're not saying like, come in and schedule an appointment, talk to one of our reps that's going to try mm -hmm. to get you to sign up for our monthly program. It's just um, check your insurance. Yeah. Really simple. They put in their insurance and then you get back to them and you check. So that's a lower thrill. So anytime you can introduce a uh, secondary call to action that's maybe less prominent, mm -hmm. um, that ask a little bit less of them, you can get them to take action. And then after mm -hmm. the fact, you warm them up through email yeah. and through follow-ups, phone calls and things like that. And, and our cliche for talking about this around the office is uh, asking for marriage on the first date. Uh, it's a lot of times if somebody comes in from a search ad, they may be trying to get uh, a little information or just learn a little bit more about pricing or find out who the players are in the space. And you don't have to offer the free quote and talk to your sales professional now. You can find these intermediate steps that people can take. So it's not like asking. Quizzes are really good. Asking for, for marriage too. on the first date. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Uh, next one, Michael. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I really like uh, faces and pictures of real people. Uh, a lot of times when you're trying to generate sales leads, there's a lot of mystery involved. And, and uh, what you want the website to do is cut through that mystery and make it more of a personal connection. And we have found that a lot of owners and founders, a lot of CEOs, actually have a lot of humility. And they say things like, well, you don't want my ugly face on the homepage. And it's like, no, dude, I kind of want your ugly face on the homepage because we want to show people this is a real person. You're not part of some national network and this isn't just a lead scraping website. You're actually here. Your family's been in this city for you're three generations. Likeability is what you're You've saying. got a team. You're a likable group of people. You're friendly, warm, diverse. Whatever, whatever is the vibe of what you want people to know about you during a first sales phone call or when you send somebody out to uh, provide a quote or an on-site meeting, um, go ahead and start doing that with the creative on the website. The more you can reach through the screen with a handshake uh, or a fist bump or just a wave during COVID times, um, the better. Uh, so faces and people are really good to do, uh, to do that. So humanize your, uh, your creative. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, next, elevate social proof. Um, so this would be user testimonial. I'm a big fan of promoting user testimonials to the very top, um, especially um, this is this um, this works well for things like uh, home services. Anybody mm -hmm. where someone needs to know that there are other people, really anything. People need to know that there are other people that are like them that experienced a good result uh, from whatever service you're providing. So um, as many of those you can gather, and it's also great sometimes to actually take, um, with the person's permission, take a screenshot of the actual review from mm -hmm. Google. Um, that looks more authentic. Um, mm -hmm. You can you can format it and put a background on it or whatever, but um, elevating social proof is, is a really good, it's from, uh, if you want a good book on, on just everything we're talking about, like in terms of influence, Robert C. Aldini, uh, has a good book called, hmm. I think it's called Persuasion. Okay, we'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, I might have the title wrong. Um, influence is what it's called. It's called Influence. Uh, but it's got all the, social proof is one of those that people want to know uh, that other people that are like them um, have experienced a good result. And Another social one, proof can have some different formats. So yeah, you, you just mentioned a couple. You said testimonials and badges. And badges. Okay. And I would maybe call that more authority because uh, these are things yeah. like member of a, uh, what, a medical organization yep. or um, Better Business Bureau approved. I or would put training certifications in that category. Training certifications. So yeah. it's other people that are in authority uh, giving you their seal of approval yep. saying these people have passed the test and they are um, they're they're a good provider and i think you kind of touched on this but awards local awards magazine yeah. awards uh, there's a local magazine that does the best five whatever of nashville yeah. or put it in there dallas or they'll give you a little Houston. seal for that yeah. those are actually really powerful um mm -hmm. for, for people to like check off the box like well these people know what they're doing yeah other people have uh confirmed that and now i can believe it right um 
Yeah, Good. that's social proof. And then why don't you take this last one, multi-step forms. A lot of what we're thinking about when we're thinking about a conversion rate is um, the, sales, the sales team really wants about 20 pieces of information to qualify and provide pricing. But and marketing on the website, name and email. marketing <laughs> wants uh, email address. Thank you, goodbye. Get it to the sales team. Yeah. So what's the? How do we do? The, what are multi forms? Yeah. So this is a. Uh, it is the same as a form, uh, but you advance through different stages. Uh, so rather than having eight forms on one, uh, eight, eight fields on one form. Yeah. You you might have two stages. Stage one and stage two. So the first one has four fields, and then you hit go, and it advances you to the next stage, um, and you do four more. Um, and the, what the, what this does is it gets people to take the first micro action, and then once they and you get enough identifying information in that first step, right? Well, sometimes the identifier so that could be name, phone, email. Sometimes the identifier is at the end. Okay. So you th so do the li the lowest threat level piece of information at the Ooh, front end. Interesting. Okay. Um, so a lot of times, some things like insurance quotes are like this. You okay. Do, you do need a lot of information. So the way to do that is break it up into bite sized chunks. Do, take them to two, three, four stages. Yeah. Uh, of a of a multi stage form, and then the more once they get the, that momentum going, mm -hmm. they're going to be more likely to advance to the next stage and finish what they started. So right? that's a snowball approach. Another approach would be what I would call a journalistic approach, most important stuff first. And that's if you're just trying to get as many leads in as you can. Right. And then you can follow up email, with them if they didn't. And then have a it. secondary form and then you can just treat yeah. that as an incomplete lead but still process it. Right. Both of yeah. those are valid. I can see both yeah, of those but, working. But two different situations. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So multi-step, anytime you have to gather a lot of pieces of information, yeah. you just can't do what you need to do without, consider if you've got more than four yeah. p fields, consider starting to break those up into two and you'll see your conversion rate increase. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Right. Take us out of here. That's it. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Um, Thanks. Uh, yeah, I, don't, and, yeah. I don't have a pre-canned outro. Yeah. Uh, thanks for Podcast uh, over. <laughs> yeah, being on episode, uh, listening to episode nine, improving your website conversion rate to generate leads. And we'll see you on the next one.